Um, I am the current CUPO president, the Human Proteome Organisation president, and my mission mm -hmm. is to try and make sure that organisation is left with a legacy mm -hmm. of good, high quality science mm -hmm. around its mission to map the Human Proteome Project. Mm -hmm. On a personal basis, I'm a cancer researcher and I'm interested in looking at how proteins on the cell surface are involved in changing early cancer from being benign cancer into malignant cancer and to use this for new biomarkers and also for new targets for therapy. Yeah, my passion for bioinformatics started when I realised that one couldn't work just simply on one protein at a time. I made a discovery uh, almost immediately after my PhD that proteins work in a social context, like humans, where they interact with each other. And these interactions can be permanent or they can be fleeting and they occur in particular spaces, in parts of the cell, for example, at particular times in development, for example. Mm -hmm. And that those protein interactions often are quite complicated. Mm -hmm. To get an understanding of those interactions, there was a need to amplify the level at which one understood how proteins work. So it was no good just to understand one protein at any time. Mm -hmm. So bioinformatics gives you that tool to analyse multiple changes simultaneously in time and space. Yes, I think uh, the talk that I just gave at the, uh, at the Congress uh, focused on human proteome data as part of the human proteome project and we've been through an expansion of data based upon, I must say, some very solid foundations that have been built up over the last 10 or 15 years since proteomics started. And based on that strong foundation, there have been some recent big data um, submissions that have been reanalyzed and re-examined by the community at large with any additional new data to discover that around two-thirds to 75% of the human proteome uh, that's of the 20,300 protein coding genes, we have mass spectrometry or antibody-based evidence for. So the aim now is to set strong, high-quality metrics to make sure that as a global community, mm -hmm. the mapping of the Human Proteome Project is based on a solid foundation. Yes, very, very important. Um, working on membrane proteins, we realise that these proteins do work in social contexts. So understanding the changes and the interaction sites between these proteins and the complexity of those interactions for a cancer cell are, are critical. Uh, so bioinformatics is a tool that underpins every a aspect of my work at present, whether that be research into prote the human proteome project, whether that be research into cancer, or research into agricultural uh, uh, proteomics. I'm also interested in, for example, the black perigord truffle, we published the proteome of that. Uh, but these things are connected because they're literally looking at collections of proteins driving some very important biology. In one case it's the life of a human being. In another case it's those proteins that distinguish cancer that's benign from that which kills you, the malignant cancer. Or the proteins that are responsible for creating the fantastic olfactory experience of smelling the black diamond the very good truffle. Very good. Uh, big data, big problems. <laughs> yes, uh, bioinformatics now is addressing a whole range of issues in my research. But I, I think the key is, uh, and I tried to bring this out in my, my talk today, and uh, uh, I think that, that it, hit, it hit struck a chord with the audience, and that is that for us to understand what bioinformatics can really deliver uh, in a long-term, high-quality sense, we need to have common metrics. We need to be speaking the same language. Um, we need terms that we understand about genomics, about transcriptomics, about epigenomics. Those terms should define the, the key aspects that differentiate the way in which those biomolecules work. And I think that's the big challenge at present getting to speak the same language and use the same jargon. jargon and parameters by which we analyze big data because you know if you if you apply um, less than high quality metrics uh, you can come up with any conclusion so you know the, the community is very good at setting high standards yes it's a good question
Very good question. If, if I was starting again, mm -hmm. looking back on my career now, I, I would ask one simple question, and that would be, what legacy could I leave that makes the bioinformatic community uh, better off in the long run, uh, respected more by its peers and by those people it services, uh, and um, uh, what efforts could you make that really make a difference? So, so pretty much it's around legacy, what you leave for the future generation. Because I think if you if you approach your sciences, um, I'm here, but only for a short while because I I already stand on the shoulders of giants and you contribute to the future, then everyone's going to have a much better future and bioinformatics will make significant contributions.